Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Fun one, fun one this week, Ed. Uh, but before we begin, let's do some plugs. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor, serialized in my Red Room comic. Uh, issue one is up there completely right now for the early adopter. It's going to see print in 2021. Uh, I put new strips out every Tuesday, and three bucks gets you the complete archive, man. A uh, gory, bloody, splatterpunk outlaw comics for uh, family fun. Perfect for the holiday season. <laughs> One more thing, Jimmy. Uh, the yes. X-Men Grand Design Omnibus, you know, 400-something pages of, of, of comics action, uh, is sold. we've sold it out. And it's going into reprints, so if people want to uh, get their hands on it for Christmas or, or whatever, whatever your store has is all they're going to be able to get, man, until uh, February. We'll do a proper video whenever the reprints come out, because they, they in fact, uh, Marvel had to get this off of Amazon for me, <laughs> because because it sold out at the distributor level. So uh, That's amazing, though, everybody that's uh, watching that at home. If you're thinking about tracking this down, grab it, because these white pages, complete scripts. Yes, it's amazing. It's the, it's the name. You know, as the, as the manga could go, man, it's it's the it's the name of uh, of the story. Man, that's great bonus material. Wow. Uh, my plug for now is the Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. This is uh, Image X Month that we're talking about. This is my image collection of uh, the full color Street Angel series. This is your ninja on a skateboard, all ages comic, perfect for anybody in your life, perfect for you. So gift it to yourself if you haven't read it yet this holiday season. I think I saw Razor Ramon in there. <laughs> Ah, indeed. <laughs> the reason we're here, though, Ed, this was one of the most exciting gimmicks of my young Image fan days. The idea here is an unusual crossover. Image comics based on the strength of the creators, right? We followed McFarlane and Silvestri and Larson, all these guys. We followed them to their own company and their own characters. What would be the most exciting thing you could do in a crossover? Switch the creators up with different books. Yeah, it was awesome, man. We started this channel on the strength of Wizard Magazine, man, covering all that stuff, and, and, and got got pretty good success uh, here on YouTube with with that. Um, we covered and bypassed the Image X stuff in the Wizard Magazine coverage that we've put it out put out there. Uh, now that we're doing these kind of daily videos, why not do you know a, a, an Image X book for for a week? Yeah. Yeah, this was a, uh, a clever gimmick, I think, and it, it really kind of showed what image guys could do. And they talk about it in the backs of some of these. You get to hear, you know, words from the creators. Let's start with Shadowhawk, yes, number zero. It, yeah, Shadowhawk is Jim Valentino's character, and on the ones and twos is uh, Rob Liefeld. It's going to be doing doing the story. And of course, they have a long history. We've talked to both of them in interviews. Track those down on Cartoonist Kayfabe. Uh, but they go back a long way, so it made sense that these buddies would switch switch their books. Now, Jimmy, right at this moment, we we do not have access to to uh, time travel. But if we did, you and I would hop in the TARDIS. We would go back there and talk to these guys and and scold them into making the Image X books that uh, that we need and that they sort of promised. And what I'm talking about is that all the all the books. They're not all created equal in in terms of uh, quality, and they sort of abuse the Image X gimmick t to one way or another, with the exception of like one person. Um, I am fascinated by this take, Ed, because I had the opposite reaction, and I think what you're referring to is it's very different how all these books are handled. Some of them are almost uh, it's it's like a, char a creator's taking their characters and making it their book, even though it has a different logo. Some of them are in pieces where they're collaborative. If, if one creator's still writing and the other guy's just drawing, and I kind of like the way that uh, that breaks down. Not a I, lot of rules. I, I wanted the creators to just make the comic like completely. So this one, it's cool because it's it's Rob Liefeld's story and artist. The demerit that he gets is having bloodshot and. Uh, I thought that was Vogue. I but, thought it was Vogue. But it's a character called Mist. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea who that is. But he gets he gets points for uh, for writing it and uh, playing around with an art style that he's never used before or since. That's worth noting. The layouts are by Carl Allstatter and, and script by Robert Napton. They were doing the Bloodstrike book at the time. I'm surprised by the layouts because that's something I always think of Rob Liefeld as uh, kind of a strength of his. So I'm a little surprised he doesn't do it. Kurt Hathaway doing lettering. This is a font, and we're going to see several of these. This, this is one of the interesting things going through this for me is early days of digital coloring, early days of digital lettering, which I didn't realize that was happening this early on. 
not all of them are, are digitally lettered, but uh, several are. And, you know, we'll point out some of this stuff. And again, the digital coloring, a lot of variation throughout these issues. So that'll be fun to point, point out as well. But Shadowhawk was a character that I thought was super cool when it was announced. I didn't love the book, mm -hmm. but I loved the concept. Vigilante backbreaker and, uh, you know, kind of a cool design. Shades of Wolverine, claws, body armor, all of it. And we get in right from the beginning on a mission. We're going to find out what mission it is and why they're there in flashbacks, but it's Rob Liefeld, man. Start with the action. Playing with, you know, a Sin City kind of yes. kind of art style. Or a Jim Lee Deathblow <laughs> art style. <laughs> the um, Well, we'll be seeing Marvin a couple of pages as you, as you, as you keep, as you keep uh, flipping. I really like this... Uh, his version of Shadowhawk here to me looks really cool. The shadows on the mask part underneath the metal, almost teeth. Like jagged teeth. And Good and, look. and it's a way more Wolverine approach with, with the mask, like as, as you could see there. Kiko Taganashi on the colors, uh, definitely one of Rob's favorite colorists because he, he made sure that Kiko would, would uh, do the color on his contribution on many books. But Kiko doing a lot of heavy lifting and kind of... Uh, fighting against the Sin City approach. Like, I want to see this in black and white. I want to see what Rob did with without um, the, the interference of the color. It would look quite different. Yeah. Kiko gets a real crazy uh, metallic texture. Is with, this Saber? Night Saber? <laughs> with a K. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, that's Marv with a, soul, with a flavor saver soul patch, man. Yeah. Shadowhawk gets drugged by... I don't know if this guy's a government operative, some kind of, you know, all these mysterious operatives. Just image universe full of these guys. He's Mars Gunther. He <laughs> runs a company. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know Shadowhawk, he has, he's HIV positive. And so this guy is dangling a cure for him. Is kind of like the, the, the bait, if you will. Yeah, and he gets into this whole thing like where it's like, I need a, I need a, a, a guy with AIDS for, for this mission. <laughs> Yeah, ridiculous. Imagine what. <laughs> imagine that's the start, and now you're tasked with like figure out what kind of mission would require that quality. I'm just gonna bleed all over in a nation. <laughs> just fly me over a town that you don't like, and I'll cut my wrists. This drawing style too, also, it it looks like it's fast, super uh -huh. fast. You know, using these tools and image at the time notorious for being late. All these guys had several books going on everywhere, so it probably was drawn very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a, uh, I like the concept of this story. It kind of sets up stuff, a direction that Shadowhawk could go. Again, when I think of Liefeld, you know, I mentioned layouts. The other thing I think of is like concepts. Um, you know, they sound good on paper. It's sort of like, yeah, I want to know what happens to that. I don't know about the payoff always coming through, but the setup is there. The flow of this, too. Yeah, this, this <laughs> giant is... robot is what they're fighting. Yeah, and it's, you need a, a guy with AIDS for that. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> Notice the uh, light blue lettering or royal blue lettering on dark blue word balloon background. Yeah, not a good look. This is not the only book in this pile that's going to do this offense. Right. Uh, Life Out paces it like by the by the books, man. Uh, by having these escalating villains and just making them bigger and bigger. It's funny. These two are supposed to be there for like support. Uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna shoot their way through this compound. So that Shadowhawk can carry out the mission, uh, but of course, Shadow this is Shadowhawk's book. So whenever they they stumble with this robot, Shadowhawk has to get involved, and I don't know what's happening there, but little, he has to do something. Little sphincter, <laughs> got to go see it. Some kind of bomb, I guess, that he plants on the guy, and uh, that takes care of him. So Shadowhawk's definitely the star. I like that part. If you're gonna do somebody else's book, go for that because we won't always see it that way. Matt Groening with a pinup, yeah, or at least signing his name on a, uh, a Bart Simpson appearance in Shadowhawk garb. Pretty cool for uh, Jim Valentino to pull this out. Yeah, and I think probably Bill Morrison is the guy to credit for for this artwork. I'm guessing who was doing a lot of Simpsons comic book art at the time. Gra Groening's name is attached with every piece of licensing, right. like so. Again, I'm sure he's didn't draw any of that stuff. Ooh, Crypt. Stephen Platt, baby. <laughs> Stephen pa Platt in black and white. I used to always love whenever you would get to see these guys uh, in this in this version, because this is what I was copying, the mm -hmm. black and white parts. All right, back to the mission at hand, the containment unit. So there's what they're there for is this is some kind of like HIV vat 
that is going to infect a big part of the population, dump it in a water reservoir or something to that effect, he's supposed to stop it. So that's why you need him, I guess, to be... He's going to be exposed to this, possibly. Jim, you get extra points for being able to keep up with the story. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's extra points, Ed. <laughs> blood Strike doing Blood Strike. These I like this of, Blood Strike a lot. I always like that version. Mignola ish villains or something. Like, like with these circle eyes. Like, I think that uh, Mignola would do, like, uh, Mole Men's little mole guys. Sort of like that with the big eyes and yeah. shit. Yeah, he, he liked the circles, like Lobster Johnson, I think, would have those goggles that would kind of glow. Yeah. So, mission accomplished, you know, saves the world from, from HIV infection by this supervillain, and, uh, and now they're going to extraction, running out of there. This would, I would like to see this in black and white. I was just thinking, I want to see this in black and white, <laughs> this ship. You know what this reminds me of a little bit, is we looked at Youngblood Strike File, and there are those pages where there's no background. It's just these cool-looking figures and then, you know, a color gradient or something. I wonder if that's an influence on the, uh, a little bit of the approach to the art style of this book. I was thinking of that. Like, when you saw Gunther, whatever his name is, um, the, the drapery, it, it, it looked like uh, Jay Lee as much as it looked like Frank Miller. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, all the coloring that makes that ship three-dimensional. They left their explosions behind. Nice mushroom cloud happening. I don't think I noticed that before. Wow. <laughs> he had to look at just like held up a toy or something, right? Held up a little G.I. Joe car? Maybe. You know, it reads like it makes sense for having such few I mean, I think it looks good. Marks. I think it looks good. That's what I'm saying, man. Like it looks almost too good. It almost reminds me of when people do like a 24-hour comic and you'll see kind of these bigger marks where it's like, I'm, I'm inking this fast. Dude, he's, he's re-embracing uh, the style of his engagement comic from Youngblood number six to his wife. You know, like he was using Sharpies and stuff on that. All right, so here he is yeah. to get the cure. They had a deal, you know. Well, Gunther lets him know when it suits me <laughs> and shoots him. This is, you really have to be tuned into the extreme style of guns, I think, to read what's happening here. Right. Wakes up in Sin City on top of a building <laughs> with the uh, Gunther hologram message. But he does explain that there, where the cure is and how, you know, how kind of to point him in the path to go find the cure. And that's basically the end. It's kind of a setup. If you're, if you're Shadowhawk, you could go in this direction. If you're uh -huh. Valentino, you could go in this direction with Shadowhawk of like, there's this cure. I, I have some parts to start on that search. And, uh, I remember reading this and thinking, like, that's a good concept for Shadowhawk. Like it's, a, like, it's a mission that makes sense as a reader. It's real easy for me to understand what's happening and send him on his way. Some of these books will work that way, where they're in, you know, quote-unquote canon of the, uh, the, the, the title and can, can be spun out. By the way, I think all of these books take place on the same day, and we'll mark it by the full moon, because <laughs> it is in all of them. Uh, that's amazing. People at home, man. One of the few 1963 character appearances was in Shadowhawk 14. I love the ads in these things. Definitely. There, there's some really strange ones. A little bit of, uh, you know, I mentioned the creators. We'll talk a little bit about their background or how this X month came about, what their experience was. And he talks about going way back with Rob Liefeld. Even credits Liefeld as the reason that he's part of Image. Because, you know, everything else is uh, Spider Books or X Books, the top-selling books at Marvel. And somehow Valentino gets part of it. It's because of his long association with Rob Liefeld. And he talked about it on that interview and told some fun stories. So if, uh, if you're interested in more of that, we have it. Yeah, shoot interview on the, on the channel. Early McFarlane Toys, again, with the, uh, the retro ads here. This Look is, at that Todd Toys logo. This was the era, man. I picked up each of those figures at Kmart. How bad was that one, though? With a little uh, bendy, yeah, little blend bendy flexi. Trying I, something. J Jimmy, I wouldn't know because I never took them out of their package. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> There's your list of creators and characters at Image at the time, and it's pretty impressive. If you want to pause the video and check that out, it's, 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 it's amazing what they accomplished in their first year or two in business. And how about that for a killer back cover ad? Let's see. Wrap it up with Steve Bissett's Tyrant, one of my favorite comics, and kind of amazing to see that. In Image X Month. <laughs> More Image X Month books to cover, Jimmy. So let's get the heck out of here. Okay, favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next vids are available. Jimmy has a bunch of stuff in stores. Octobriana, Street Angel, Plain Janes. I have the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. The X-Men Grand Design Omnibus is sold out. So if your store has it, get it if you want it. Because we're not going to be reprinting them for before Christmas. 
Uh, what else? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we do. Uh, I'm pushing people to sign up for that because it is a way to hopefully stay in touch. These algorithms on social media can make it hard. You miss some posts, the newsletter will keep you up to speed. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at the links below this video. And you can find all of our social media links to follow Cartoonist Kayfabe, me, and Ed uh, throughout Instagram, Twitter, and all those places. Give them one more set of marching orders and we'll bounce, Jimmy. Read more comics.